Good morning, folks. I'm here at my delivery. And they weren't ready for me. <laughs> Somewhere along the lines was some miscommunication again. So I had an appointment which had been confirmed for 7 a.m. They're not even here at 7 a.m. I got here at just before 7, probably like 6.45 or so. Looking around, looking around, no one here. So I, I kept, well, I called the guy right away. He didn't pick up, didn't pick up. So around 7.30 or so, he, I got a hold of the guy. And uh, he let me know that there actually isn't anyone here at 7 a.m. And that I couldn't have had a 7 a.m. appointment. And that they could probably get to me probably around 10 o'clock. But they didn't have any appointment on the books for me. And I'm at the right place, I confirmed it. But they don't have any appointment down, even though I confirmed 7 a.m., even though they're not here at 7 a.m. So I'm, I'm playing the waiting game. I took my tarps off already, because I know I'm at the right place, and now I'm just waiting for uh, word that they have time to unload me. You know, I could have called in twice just to double check, just triple check, make sure that my appointment was good. But I didn't see any need for that. I, I had an appointment, it had been confirmed once. Why call again just to confirm again, right? Good thing I'm in not too much of a rush. I have a reload at 1 o'clock though in Langley. So I really hope that they do start loading me or unloading me around 10. What's the time now? Just before 8.30. All my tarps are off, all rolled up, and I'm all ready to get unloaded. Chevy's awake and scratching away. Diesel's still half asleep. I'm still half asleep. Who am I kidding? I guess we'll uh, see what happens. A little disappointed, but what can you do? That's trucking. Nothing ever goes as planned. Almost nothing. At least we got here with no bad weather. Let's say there's some positive right there. We got all the way here. Three days of driving. 3,000 kilometers, 1,800 miles. Perfect weather the whole way. That was the quickest anyone has ever unloaded me glass. Under 10 minutes, boom, 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 boom. All the stacks off my trailer. So many places take them off one at a time. This place just came in there with this big honking forklift that could lift 30,000 pounds apparently. Cause I told them each bundle is like 8,500 pounds. He's like, oh no, there's nothing. No worries, this thing's, this thing's gonna lift 30,000 pounds. And no kidding. Less than 10 minutes, unloaded. Now I'm on my way to my reload. I actually had time to go for a nap. I had a little nap, I'm all refreshed, I'm good to go. I just had my coffee, I'm all wired. We're just rolling into Langley. We'll pick up this uh, insulation stuff or like for, for walls, bring it to that factory or whatever that place is again in Portage La Prairie. It's gonna be so cold. But the good news is that we can tarp it here in British Columbia where it's nice and toasty warm. It's 11 Celsius right now. When we get back to Manitoba where I'm unloading, it'll probably be about minus 30. Well, my lane is ending. That's why no one's in this lane. I was wondering. Why is nobody in this lane? Is nobody like this lane? Look at this tiny little car here. What is that? Car to go. That's not even a smart car. No, that's a smart car. Car to go. That's like a pocket sized car. Yeah, just put that car in your pocket and take it everywhere you go. Can you imagine if, like, people in front of him slammed on his brakes and then blah, 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 worst came to worst, and I just plowed into the rear end of him? The investigators would have to look very, very closely to realize that there was actually a car, a separate vehicle between me and that pickup in front of it. This little thing is either like a little pocket car, it's also called a little death trap. You want to die? Drive a smart car. That's just my opinion though. I know some of you drive smart cars. So sorry if I'm being a little harsh on you, but why? Is it is it all about the fuel economy? Is that what it is? Is it all fuel economy? Is that why you drive it? Okay, I can see your point of view from that point of view, but you know, it doesn't matter how much fuel you save or how much emissions you save, whatever you're going for, when a truck hits you, they're, they're, it just doesn't matter. But if you have one and I ever meet you, I'd love the chance to drive it. <laughs> I'd drive one. I don't care if it's a death trap. I think it'd be funny. 
fun and funny. I don't know. Trucker Josh drives a smart car. It'd make a great vlog. So if you have one, hey, all the power to you. I'm not trying to bring you down or anything. I'm just having fun here, talking about this little thing in front of me. Look at it. Well, it took me more than a little while, but she's all wrapped up like a nice birthday present. I think it turned out pretty good. Had to use all four tarps though. That'll be fun rolling these up in minus 30 in Manitoba. It's plus 10 here right now. Nice and warm. So that's that. Time to hit the road. I'm gonna stop in Hope, BC. I might have a shower there, but I might also wait to that Petro Pass in Kamloops. Remember that shower there? It had like the jets coming out of the sides, the showers on the sides, then the rain shower on top. But I do need to stop and wash my hands somewhere. I wish I had a sink in the truck. We'll see. Chevy, 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 are you ready to go? Are you ready to go, man? Oh, nice. Very nice. Lovely. Just getting onto the Trans Canada eastbound here. That'll take me uh, through the mountains into Alberta, Saskatchewan, then finally Manitoba. And uh, <laughs> seems like everybody else wants to get on the highway too. It's a popular place to be. Look at this, like a double merge, like a double whammy. So these guys got to merge into my lane, and then together we got to merge into their lanes. I'm letting two of you in. That's generous. That's generous. Oh, look at that guy just lane diving. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that was rude. That was rude. Did you guys see that? So I'm gonna go in behind this truck here. Luckily, no one's doing that to me because I would just keep coming in. Drive 903 kilometers on Highway 1 East. All right, I do not want to be behind this guy. Just like all you guys driving your little cars and four-wheelers, I don't like being behind trucks either. I like to be able to see where I'm going. But I don't think I'm going to get around him for, for a while till we're out of this mess. to Kamloops, British Columbia, and this is the very next day. Well, good morning, it's the next day. Uh, just waking up here and uh, these boys need some breakfast, don't you? Don't you? My truck's a little messy right now. I gotta take out all the garbage, so I don't wanna show it to you right now. But I'll show you what they're getting for breakfast. So they're still on two different foods. This is Diesel's here. He's just finishing off all the rest of the food that we uh, that we had. We, we went through a couple of different bags of food because Chevy's got some allergies and we were trying to figure out exactly what it was and pinpoint it and then also find a food that was affordable uh, because most specialized foods like that cost a fortune. So I think we found a really good match right here. Uh, and right now I'm forgetting what the brand is, but I'll get back to you on that. Uh, this is Chevy's food here. We're going to eventually get diesel moved completely onto this as well. But it takes them, I, I usually take about two weeks to move them from one food to another food, just slowly adding a little bit more every day until they're fully on the new food. Otherwise, it really upsets their stomach. And on the truck, when Chevy first got on the truck, he was really nervous to, uh, to eat on the truck. And I, I guess he uh, everything was sort of new, all the new smells, all the new sights. And... Uh, 
to get him to eat, I would <laughs> mix in a little bit of this with his food, right? And to make it fair, I would give it to Diesel as well. Uh, now this is something you can only buy in Canada at Walmart apparently because I've been looking at Walmart in the US. Maybe I just haven't found it yet, but it's Vital Life Natural Diet. This isn't an ad. Uh, beef with vegetables, it's got no chicken in it because Chevy's allergic to chicken and it's grain free. And I take just a little cut of it and I mix it into their food and that's just enough for them to spark their appetite where they just can't resist it. So I open it up just a smidge and I just, you know, take a little slice of the bottom. This is much harder to do with one hand than I thought it would be. But, uh, <laughs> just that. And then I split this into two. You have half to diesel, half to Chevy. Just like that. And I put this in a sealed uh, sandwich bag, or even a freezer bag, whatever you want to use, and I put it in the fridge. Because you got to keep that cold now that it's open. Put that there for now. <sighs> And then I don't just put it in here like this because then what do you what do you think they're gonna do? Obviously, they're just gonna grab the one little piece and leave the rest, right? Well, we can't have that. We gotta mix it in, but we gotta mix in diesels. Nope, pardon me. We gotta mix in, yeah, gotta do diesels last. We gotta do Chevy's first because Chevy's allergic to this food, right? So I don't want to mix this in unless if I use a different fork, but I only want to use one fork. So I'll mix Chevy's in here first and then I'll do diesels after. And then they just can't resist it. So when you're done, you can hardly even tell, but they can tell and they love it. Chevy, come here. Come here, Chef. Come here, Chef. Come on. Oh, Diesel's in the way. Diesel, get up. Diesel, come on. Okay, you know what? You want to come up here? Okay. How about you come up here? There's your food. There's your food, Chevy. Chevy, there you go. There you go, buddy. Go to town, man. How is it? Am I a good cook or what? Yeah? You like it? <laughs> good boy. What do you think of it, Diesel? You like my cooking? This is pretty good. You could have used a little bit more of this stuff over here. You should probably take that away so that you don't get tempted and eat that. Oh, isn't that good? Isn't it good? Don't show me eating, man. Come on. I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I didn't realize that this table scratched so easily. I didn't even think about it, that that would even be an, like a possibility. And I've scratched this table up a little bit here. I'm disappointed in myself. Can you see that? Don't like that. At least I got a breakfast date this morning, huh? <laughs> so thanks for watching today. Uh, I don't think my video was very long today, was it? Uh, I spent most of the day unloading that tarp load and then reloading another tarp load. And I already showed it to you, right? It's wrapped up like a nice little birthday present. I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. It's pretty easy to tarp the square loads. So I can't go and tell you that it was very difficult, but uh, it took four tarps and the difficult part is coming. I got to tarp this trailer in 12 degrees Celsius, which is probably like in the 50s or something Fahrenheit. But the fun is yet to come. Right now in Manitoba, it's minus 30. I just checked the weather forecast. And the forecast for tonight, the low is minus 39 Celsius. You wanna know what that is in Fahrenheit? That's minus 39 Fahrenheit. They, they meet at minus 40, so it's exactly the same. And the wind chills are down well below that. So it's cold back home and I'm not looking forward to that because I got four tarps on this load that I've got to roll up and they're going to be frozen solid so that'll be fun but we'll get it done and uh, we get to go home after that so there's a reward at the end of the tunnel for us and I'm gonna get myself woken up here you can tell I just just opened my eyes uh, grab a coffee go for a bit of a walk Get some fresh air. And uh, we'll see you in tomorrow's vlog. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a lot of scenery because we're leaving the mountains. So we're going to be going right through them. If you guys like that kind of thing, tune in. If not, tune in anyways. Come see what we're up to. I don't even know what we're going to be up to yet. So I'll see you then. Don't forget also, my wife, Britt, has been making videos every day on her channel, Britt's Beat. Link is down below in the description, like I always say. If you want to uh, go and check that out, I would encourage that. She's documenting Frankie's recovery very well there, and she's learned how to edit and make videos all on her own. 
Uh, so she's making them at home right now while she's with Frank. And they're actually, I'm, I'm very proud of her. I'm really impressed with the way they turned out. She's just starting uh, making regular videos. So they're way better than when I started making regular videos. Way better. <laughs> Things that are good for them. You also don't want to overdo it with carrots because they're high in sugar. But those seem to be the things that Frankie likes. So this is her what channel. We go with. Whatever works, right? As long as it's not in excess. So now we're going to pack a bag because it's snowy and blowy out there. Oh no. Don't know if you can see that snowy or not. Snowy and blowy at home. We're going to pack a bag and where are we going to go? We're going to go to Grandma's? Where? We're packing a bag just in case the roads get bad. In Manitoba, you always have to expect the worst in terms of weather. So we might have a sleepover, buddy. Sound good? Go see Grandma? Yeah? That's all you guys get. You guys got to go watch her channel to see the rest.